Um, now, do not forget to scan the on-screen QR code and complete the survey. The more sessions you evaluate, the more likely you are to win a prize in the raffle. Recuerden que tenemos traducción simultánea. A su derecha hay equipos y audífonos, así que tenemos traducción simultánea de inglés a español. Ahora, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our following sponsors for their invaluable support in making this event a success. Department of Economic Development, Banco Popular, Puerto Rico Agricultural Credit, Triple S, Municipality of San Juan, Puerto Rico Tourism Company, Puerto Rico Convention Center, AARP Puerto Rico, Invest PR, Ferraioli LLC, Aeronet, Banco Oriental, Walmart, Freedom, y Titin Foundation. Now, moving on to our next session organized by my colleague and the Puerto Rico Research and Innovation Meetup, let's give a warm welcome to Ricardo Burgos, director of the Puerto Rico Research and Innovation Meetup, a program of the trust, and Jorge Fontanes, CEO of B Labs US and Canada. They'll be talking about becoming a B Corp and how certifications drives purpose and profit. Welcome. Muchas gracias. Buenos días. Buenos días. Wow, Jorge, we have you finally in Puerto Rico. I cannot believe it. It's good to be here. Thank you for the invitation. So I want to start, it, uh, I wanna start uh, this session asking the public, who knows what is a big certified corporation? Can you raise your hands? All right, so we have a few. few. Awesome. So the Puerto Rico Science, Technology, and Research Trust have, has been supporting, uh, promoting the B Corp movement in Puerto Rico for the past three years. And we have done it in a very systematic way, slowly building momentum. But we are at a point where um, probably six, seven months ago, Jorge joined B Lab US and Canada as the new CEO. Two years. Two years. Oh, wow, look at that. Time flies. And when I heard the news that uh, he was joining, I was very happy because he is Puerto Rican. So that, that made it very, uh, very, a very good connection there. So I want to kick it off with uh, letting Jorge explain uh, his uh, role in B-Lab and a little bit of what is the B Corp movement. Yeah. Ricardo, first, thank you for the invitation. It has been two years since I joined uh, B-Lab, which just for context is a global network of nonprofit organizations that establishes and has, a, has created now 17 years ago uh, one of the foremost set of standards on environmental, social, and governance in which businesses can use to measure their impact. When I joined two years ago, uh, I was motivated not only by the history and the brand that is B Corps. So there's B Lab. B Lab is the nonprofit organization behind or the engine behind B Corps, which are the companies certified under our standards. We're now 7,000 and growing around the world. B Lab US and Canada, where I lead today, US, Canada, and Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, is one of seven sister organizations around the world, and we have the largest community of B Corps. I was motivated to join this organization at a time when business and business leaders are asking themselves, what is our role in affecting society and addressing the issues of the environment and climate change? What is our role as business leaders in revisiting how business is defined and the role or the, the role of policy and the laws 
that underlie how business operates, that often create inequity between business and society, whether that's the workers who are looking to be paid a fair wage, or community members who are experiencing environmental degradation or other negative impacts as a result of their business operations. The work of B Lab as a global network is unified under one strategy, one vision, and one voice. And the idea is aspirational. The idea is that we are building a movement of companies that are working collectively to change the system. I look to my personal connection to Puerto Rico. I used to come to Puerto Rico as a kid often uh, for the summers. And as an adult, particularly the last two decades, I've come to understand how Puerto Rico in particular serves as a lens through which we can understand what's possible. Puerto Rico has such a deep and complex history, of course, and while I've never lived here, I do see also the possibility and also feel the energy already in this place and in this room of how Boricuas are looking to empower themselves to create a new kind of economy and a new way of working by using business as a force for good, which is what we say. So this is what's inspiring me. This is what brought us here, brought me to this organization. And very briefly to your second question, being a B Corp is really about looking at how your business affects what we call five stakeholders. These are employees, your customers, your shareholders also, your suppliers, and also the environment, the planet. And our standards are really a way for companies to assess the impact of their organization in those five areas. Those that certify achieve a score of 80. And it's important to note that the average score for companies that ap apply to become a B Corp is around 50. So the score of 80 has been determined as a differentiating number that sets B Corps apart from the average business. Awesome. Um, one of the reasons that we at the Trust uh, realized that it was important to bring this movement to Puerto Rico was because in particular in the Parallel 18 program of acceleration and incubation, we, have a f we had a few companies that when they were put to talk in front of uh, venture capital funds, the funders asked them, why are you not a nonprofit? And we were like, uh, they are not a nonprofit because they're a legitimate business that wants to do good, that they want to be sustainable, that they want to have a positive impact on the environment. So. That, that's how we realized that it was coming from the ecosystem, the, the need to be part of, of a movement that was not recognizing them and then for them to be able to tap into new funding opportunities that are out there, w which are called the Impact Investment Fund, uh, and a way to be able to access this kind of capital is also getting certified because more and more these funds are looking at the certification as part of the due diligence. So I wanted to ask you in regards to how the movement is helping companies that want to do good access new ways of capital. Is that something that you guys are seeing? So yes, I want to acknowledge what you pointed out is a very common experience for entrepreneurs who believe that their business can have a purpose <laughs> other than making money, right? Other than making profit. This is not, still not, even though I think we are seeing a real culture change and a new generation that believes and actually demands better 
practice from business, uh, we are not seeing, there's a real gap in the ecosystem between companies that are starting up and their ability to access capital under the model of purpose and profit being two things that are part of their mission. So I appreciate that eh, Empresas de Información de Puerto Rico is starting as an ecosystem to solve for that first. And the work of the PR Science Trust and Comena 66 and Parallel 18 is a model that I think we actually can learn from and bring to other parts of our VLAB network and B Corp community. Because today, the value proposition for B Corp certification is in some ways working to do what you said, which is to validate the business model of new companies, startups, and also existing companies so that they can say, this is how we're differentiating ourselves in the marketplace, and it is beginning to appeal to investors. But part of the challenge is that investors still look for, uh, you know, high returns, a return on investment. And often we associate this idea that you mentioned that a business that's trying to do good should instead be a not-for-profit. But we believe that business, the business sector has so much opportunity to redirect its resources to solve some of the world's biggest challenges. So I want to be clear that B Corp certification is, and the number of B Corps we have is impressive. And awareness of B Corp certification outside of Puerto Rico, because we're just having a 101 session now. But outside of, in, in the US, brand awareness for B Corp certification is at 61% amongst Gen Z and millennials, and over 50% for adults, age 18 to all the adults above 18. Any brand would see that as a measure of success already. And so we're using this level of brand awareness to continue the conversation about the role of business and, tr and work now more with the investor community to understand how purpose and B Corp certification in particular creates value, right? And it isn't about making a trade-off between good and profit, but instead that the total sum actually is better for the bottom line. And that's a business case that we still have yet to prove. Your question about access to capital is an important one. And I think part of what we need are investors who are not just patient, but actually share the vision of how business can actually, in the DNA of business models, create new ways of growing that are actually going to deliver the returns, maybe even beyond what investors see today. Awesome. Um, we, we have been seeing in Parallel 18 more and more uh, since we started to talk about big certification in Puerto Rico. The first time I got there, I mentioned that some companies were having this uh, label of why are you not a nonprofit instead of a business for uh, uh, of a business. But back then, none of these companies knew that there was a certification or existed a certification that could uh, help them, you know, uh, navigate a, a this world of impact investment. More and more, we're seeing. Every, with every cohort, how more of the younger entrepreneurs, as you were mentioning, when I asked the same question and asked here, who knows what is a big corporation, they, they raise their hand, which is incredible because it's organic. It comes from them seeking for this kind of movement uh, globally. And not only that, in the last cohort of Parallel 18, we had three companies that already started the, the certification process, or at least look at the assessment. So 
one question I wanted to ask you was, and I, I believe you addressed it, but I, I wanted to go over it again because I think it's important in terms of what we want to achieve in Puerto Rico because right now uh, Jorge mentioned about a cohort that we are running. So uh, what we are doing is we have been in meetings for the past three years, as I mentioned before. At the beginning, we started with a meeting that we brought the 10 directors of the top incubators and accelerators in Puerto Rico, Guayacan, Parallel 18, Bravo Foundation, and, and some others. And uh, none of them knew what a B certification was. And these are the directors of the incubators and accelerators. So we saw a huge opportunity to evangelize this, um, these organizations. And w as, as we are, were progressing, then we started with what we call now Empresas B en Formación. This, uh, this is a group that is happening. We meet every month. Uh, and uh, right now we are 42 companies that are participating in these meetings. And what we decided was, okay, how do we speed up uh, certifications in Puerto Rico? So we created the first cohort that is gonna be launching uh, late September. And it's gonna be 25 companies that are gonna be selected. From those 25, those 25 companies are gonna go through a program with, uh, with a resource that is gonna be with them every step of the way on the certification. So let's say that we are successful, we, cert we get certification for companies, but the question I wanna ask you is, how then is the B certification gonna be of value to these companies for, and how the consumer is gonna look and how do we work to also evangelize the consumer? Because more and more we have, I, I consider myself one of them, consumers that wanna support companies that are doing good. They want I wanna feel proud as a consumer to be buying products from a company that is doing packaging that is uh, not, not creating more uh, waste. Um, so how do, we, how do we build this movement both ways? Not only certifying companies, but also working for the consumers to realize, oh, that's a B uh, company certified. I want to support them because they are doing good. Yeah, I think it's an important question. I think I think we're starting it now, right? This way of recognizing uh, and having conversations, but also you said that there is already a generation here in Puerto Rico that that has some awareness, maybe not as high as in the U.S., but has some awareness. Um, I think there's a couple things. There's, there are a couple dynamics in the B Corp community. We call ourselves a community very purposefully because this is where you're starting. You're creating the conditions in which businesses can learn from each other. So B Lab, our role is to be a connector, a convener, and to educate B Corps. Ultimately, our vision, we have a vision 2030, which is really about getting to a point where we are sharing best practices at scale, where businesses, B Corp and non-B Corp, are adopting more and better business practices for the benefit of all people and the economy. Now that's a, it's a fairly short runway to get to 2030 but it's helping us inform how we structure ourselves and how we support B locals like Empresas B Información. For many B Corps today, uh, I'm thinking about some of our largest B Corps. Uh, Danone, which is one of the largest multinational companies on the, on the planet. <laughs> has been certifying its subsidiaries around the world. They now have certified 70% of their subsidiaries. Danone North America, which, which lives in our community, for the last two years since I've been in, as CEO, they've invited me to be part of their employee day. Danone uses the B Corp certification and the association 
as a way to motivate employees and to strengthen the loyalty and lower turnover, right? Employees are our biggest advocates. So while we often think about how do we build awareness, grow awareness with customers, I come back to what I see happening in our community, which is that employees are the best way for us to champion and grow awareness of, B Corp, of the B Corp community. So that is one of the strongest value propositions that large multinationals like Danone and small startup companies are using to attract and to retain talent in this marketplace where Gen Z's entering the marketplace and millennials who are now the biggest workforce in generations are looking for how their values align with the company that they're working for. So that's one way to think about the value being created. The other is we have a number of networks. So Be Locals, you can think about Be Locals as a network of community that is place-based, right? So a Be Local that you are becoming here in Puerto Rico serving companies in Puerto Rico. We have 30 chapters of Be Locals in the mainland and in Canada that are place-based from Portland to New York to Texas to Vancouver to Toronto and Ontario. These are organically becoming the ways in which B Corps are connecting and learning from each other. And then we have, I've lost count, but we have dozens of other networks that businesses opt into. So there is a um, collective of companies working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions for net zero. There is uh, a women's network, We the Change, that is focused on gender equity in our work. There is a network of black, indigenous, and people of color who are coming together to a, uh, also inform how we support the specific needs of underrepresented communities, and then many others that are uh, also industry-based. So there's a beauty coalition that actually is a global network of companies in the fashion, skin care, and other sectors in the fashion and beauty industry that are com already have actually made their own commitments to green their supply chain and to share best practices around packaging in an open source way, in a pre-competitive way. This is what we see already happening in our network, and it, that's, that's and now that you have goosebumps, right? It's, that's the energy of community to think differently about what it means to compete, quote unquote, in, in the marketplace. Awesome. You, you touch on a very important topic, and that's the employment. Uh, uh, more and more we see as a challenge to retain employees in companies. And the new generations are seeking for meaning, for value. Uh, and once they see that companies are not uh, walking the talk, right? Uh, and I see, I have a few examples which I cannot mention, but um, big corporations, traditional corporations have has traditionally done the corporate responsibility, which at the end tends to be just a little investment in a community project, but it's nothing systematic as you were mentioning. Um, so I, 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 I completely get how the B certification and being a B Corp is impacting the retention of employees and that link to how those employees become advocates of that company and the movement and how that creates a whole chain reaction, you know, in terms of, of supporting the B Corps. Um, but I wanted to pivot a little bit into what, and you mentioned Danone, right, which is a, a, a mega conglomerate. But I, I would like to talk a little bit about other other companies. I, I know that Patagonia, for example, probably a lot of people here know Patagonia, the outdoor sport, sports, sporting goods company, and also Ben & Jerry's. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people here eat Ben & Jerry's. So what is the 
why these companies are, what is the benefit for companies to be a B Corp? Uh, can, we, can we elaborate a little bit more on that? And also, for example, also talk about like, you, you mentioned the value chain, right? How the supply network of these companies, they look to suppliers that are also doing good, that uh, it could be fair trade, it could be uh, uh, a fair way to transaction with all these suppliers. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit sure. on the benefits? Yeah, I can offer, so, you know, I just wanna say Patagonia, Ben & Jerry's, uh, are often the most overused examples. So I'm gonna try and bring some new ones. Um, one of the examples that inspires me a lot is the, the um, relationship that has been created between a smaller baking company in New York, in Yonkers, New York, called Grayston Bakery, which is a social enterprise. They are actually, their ownership structure is unique already because they are owned by the Grayston Foundation, and their mission is very focused on employment practices uh, and creating uh, ac equitable access to employment opportunities. That is actually built into their DNA and their history uh, with the foundation and their founder is, has been focused on reducing recidivism of formerly incarcerated people mm -hmm. in New York. And it's been a very successful model that has also pushed the conversation around uh, not only fair wage, but also how we reduce, if not eliminate, the barriers of access to employment. On the other side of the spectrum uh, is Natura. Natura is a Brazilian-based B Corp that owns many other B Corp certified companies that include uh, Avon, and The Body Shop. Mm. The Body Shop, many of you probably know, I don't know, I haven't seen a Body Shop yet here in Puerto Rico. There might be stores here. As a retailer, The Body Shop had a problem. And it worked with Grayson Bakery and their CEO, Joe Kenner, who's become a friend, to understand how might we learn from what you're doing in your open hiring practice and apply it to our retail stores because we're struggling to, with turnover. We're struggling to retain talent in our stores. Open hiring, just to explain it simply, at Grayson Bakery is if you need a job, we have a job and you get the job. There are no background checks, there's no application, there's no credit score check. There's no criminal background check. Oh, wow. They have a growing wait list of people who need jobs. And when they have a job, they go to the next person on the list and they hire that person. Grayson Bakery has eliminated the barriers of access to employment in a very radical way. The body shop looked at their model and said, okay, maybe we can't do that exactly, <laughs> but how might we rethink what's necessary to get comfortable with extending a job to a new hire? And so they did go about the, uh, and, and decided we're going to eliminate background checks, we're not gonna do credit scores. They got as close to open hiring as possible and the value that they have seen is almost immeasurable. Because what we don't capture in finances and in the bottom line is the cost of retention and hiring new people when your turnover rate is 40%. So that's an example that really, I think, crystallizes not only the value being created through B Corp certification, but also makes the connection of the value of B Corps connecting with other B Corps, large and small. You, you, you jump the, the rope here because that's exactly where I, well, I was gonna ask Nesk, Nesk, next. And it is how, can you, can you expand a little bit on these relationships of b between B Corps? How do they relate? Do they, do they seek to, to each other 
beyond this example that you've given us, d is there a pattern in which B Corp's communities support each other and do business with each other? Yes, we have actually a, a platform. It's not public, but we call it the, the Beehive, like, you know, the bees. <laughs> I call the, bee, <laughs> the Beehive. Um, and the Beehive is, is, a, is a platform, just like a social media platform, like LinkedIn or any other platform like that, um, where people within the company ask questions. I'm looking for XYZ, or they're posting jobs, or, um, you know, in the US context, we're, we're dealing with a lot of difficult questions. One example of that is, how do we actually decarbonize the planet? <laughs> how do we actually look at opportunities in our business to reduce or eliminate waste, reduce our dependency on water, to look at mm, the cycles of um, uh, the, the, the regenerative cycles in which we want to ensure that whatever we produce doesn't go to landfill, right? That those kinds of conversations are happening in the Beehive platform, they're also happening in community. A lot of it is self-organized. And this is also the beautiful thing about the B Corp community because our team at B Lab US and Canada, we're 40 people. We're only 40 people. <laughs> so our challenge, and I said to you already, we are the largest community on the planet. So our challenge is to figure out how do we scale engagement and connection without growing our team as quickly as the community is growing. And that's already happening at a local level. We have at least one platform, Beehive. Um, and then annually, we host our own retreat. We have a retreat coming up in Vancouver. I mentioned this to you earlier. Uh, called Champions Retreat, Retreat, you know, Los Campeones, Los Campeones de Negocio. Um, that's the, the title, and that will be in Vancouver in March. But also, all of the B locals that I mentioned organize their own events, and they have regional conferences called BUILDS, um, B Corp Leadership Development Programs, and there are seven regional programs. The energy of the B Corp movement when you come to our conference, I think you'll see how different and unique it is and that that value is being created not by us, but by, by the community itself. Amazing. Um, can we talk a little bit about how do you guys approach also, and I wanna mention Puerto Rico has one B certified company right now, even though we have uh, already um, identified two other companies that are US-based companies that have a presence in Puerto Rico and they're also certified. So um, how do you, and, and this B Corp that is certified is called uh, Grupo Legal Acosta, which is a lawyer uh, service company, um, which is great because they know the ins and outs of how to uh, structure your corporation to have the bylaws and all the standards in place for the certification. So my question is, as, as the movement grows in Puerto Rico, we need lawyers that are versed, but we also need finance people, we need accountants, we need uh, the academia to jump in and bring this into their curriculums, we need this ecosystem, which we're gonna meet with a lot of them later on during the day, that service the community of entrepreneurs in Puerto Rico. How, how are you dealing with the rest of the pieces that needs to be there for this movement to keep growing? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, we, do, we need lawyers, yes. Uh, <laughs> we need lawyers for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, I mentioned the challenges that we're experiencing particularly on the mainland, also extend to the questions of business's role in addressing diversity and inclusion in a moment where the Supreme Court just overturned affirmative action, affirmative action which while that sp specific case applies to colleges, 
and college admissions, we're seeing how those same practices in the corporate sector are being challenged. We need lawyers right now to help us understand how to, I'm gonna use the word codify, but to, to think about the legal strategy under which we can protect companies that are actually adopting better business practice that is good for their business and for their employees and for the community without being risk of having there be legal action. This is a concern for us and more conversations to be had about that. As I mentioned, our community is very organic uh, in its formation. So rather than us look to try and build those ecosystems, we look first and foremost for where is the energy and who within the community can stand up the needs of the community going forward. One example of that, you mentioned supply chain. So there is a procurement network um, that has been recently formed and they're going to establish their charter for what are the specific goals of this network that we share and how do we begin to share better supplier practices. We, I mentioned the example of the B Corp coalition, the beauty coalition. That is an example of how they're working to affect the supply chain. At the end of the day, our product is the standards mm -hmm. that are embedded in the certification. So whenever there's a question about how do we guide companies in this work, we, we do come back to the standards. Because B Corps ask us, and we're working on the next evolution of our standards, which will be published next year in 2024. And it's going to look very different because as I mentioned, we've been up to now for the last 17 years, being a B Corp has meant doing good for your five stakeholders. We're actually moving to a model where it's not just about stakeholders because you can achieve B Corp certification a number of ways, but instead we have 10 minimum requirements. So the B Corp, B, the, what, what it means to be a B Corp will change in the next few years. And it's very exciting for us because now we get to say that we continue to, be, to, to raise the bar, so to speak, and say that B Corps stand for environmental stewardship, for the work of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, for the, nece the necessary actions of businesses working collectively to actually change policy. Those are just three examples of the 10 areas that we're now opening up to public consultation. And so we invite any of you who have interest to learn more about the standards. But again, I come back to this ecosystem of lawyers, academics, researchers, um, policy makers are all ways in which we are committed to cultivating those relationships. But the work needs to sit in the community because our organization will only be successful in relationship with community. Awesome. And, and what you just mentioned make me jump uh, into thinking about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. I'm sure a lot of people here are aware of those goals. Uh, can you talk to us on how you guys are supporting the SDGs and the new platform that, that was launched? Sure, yeah, we've had a, a, a very specific tool. So you mentioned earlier we have what's called the B Impact Assessment or the BIA. This is available for anyone who has interest in getting started today, tomorrow. You just go to our website, look for the BIA, the B Impact Assessment, and you can begin the process and learn what it takes to become a B Corp. We also have a tool called the SDG Action Manager that aligns to the Sustainable Development Goals. And so for any company that is looking at specific areas, whether it be poverty alleviation or climate action um, uh, or inequality, we use that tool to map to our standards. So you can begin to see how the two frameworks relate. Uh, in the very near future, we're going to be relaunching, actually, uh, an application and a tool where all of this is packaged as one. 
because we recognize that one of the things that we as an organization can do is to make it easier for those of you who are not only working with the SDGs, but also other, um, other frameworks, other certifications, whether it be Fair Trade, uh, ISSB, SASB, the accounting framework. There are a lot of ways for businesses to evaluate themselves on environmental social governance standards, but I want, you to, I want to leave you with a very specific distinction about B Corp certification. Every other, certif most other certifications, let me just clarify that, most other certifications are disclosure certifications. They're requirements for companies to say, I'm either meeting this goal or I'm not meeting this goal. B Corp certification is a performance requirement. And back to your question about legal, what's very exciting about um, what it means to be a B Corp today is for the last decade, we have been working with policymakers in the United States, but also around the world, and in Puerto Rico, to pass what we call public benefit corporation legislation. It's a very important new corporate structure that creates a mission lock, meaning not only does, is it about performance, but it also now is in the DNA of the, corp of the corporation. In Puerto Rico, public benefit legislation was passed in 2015. And so you now and the community of companies that you're starting with this cohort benefit from the fact that this legislation exists. Any one of you that is starting a company or has a company that wants to consider becoming a B Corp, one of the first steps is this legal requirement and either reincorporating as a public benefit corp or amending your charter. This gets into territory where we should bring the lawyers on stage to explain. Um, but I think to your point, uh, yes, we, we, you all will want to have more lawyers in place also to advise your boards and your investors about why this change is important and why the investment in the change uh, also creates value down the line. Thank you, Jorge. Um, I see that, wow, time flies. Uh, I would like to open, is, uh, any questions? Anybody would like, I see a, a hand raised. Do we have microphones that we can provide? No, no microphone support. Do you wanna come closer? Thank you. There's a microphone coming. So while we get the microphone for the question, and anybody else who would like to have a question, could you please come closer to the microphone so we can speed it up because we have uh, a few minutes. But I want to stress something very quickly. Anybody that is interested in measuring how your company is impacting society, the environment, uh, and, and what we have talked here can go into the B Lab, uh, bcorp.net. Uh, we are bcorps.com. We are bcorps.com, and there's a B impact assessment. This is free. You can do it tomorrow, and then that will give you a score, and you will know where do you stand. You know, you don't need to go all the way to getting certified, which is a very rigorous process. And, uh, and, uh, and takes time. But if you wanna, you know, you have this in your DNA, you wanna do good, you want your enterprise to be part of solutions, you know, uh, you, I, I exhort you to go into the platform and, and, and do the B impact assessment. Please, your question. Yes, thank you for bringing up all those examples and giving hope to all the people here in Puerto Rico who are trying to make a difference. My name is Kathleen Ramos. Maybe you've seen me. I have a business called Cultura Bicicleta. It's a cooperative. And I am asking how and if it's possible because a, a co-op is a different, uh, it has a different spirit and it, it has different laws. We, however, are only recognized at state level for tax exemptions, which then becomes a block to getting access to some capital opportunities that 
our state for or or, or recognized by state with a 501. So I'm wondering if there is a possibility of then getting that recognition at by becoming a B Corp, another. So how could could I be recognized, or would I? It will the co-op need to perish in order to become something else? This is where we need to bring the lawyers in the room. So I think I can answer your question simply by saying, so let me just confirm, you're a for-profit entity, yes? In Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. Uh, co-ops that are diversidad. Um, uh, you're, you're, co you're a co-op. Exacto. A co-op. Uh, co yeah. Se llama, uh, it's called uh, 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 cooperativas de, de tipos diversos. Yeah. Bien. I know an example, actually, in, in Australia, actually, we're having this conversation because the difference between, with a cooperative is that it specifies that its mission is for the benefit of the employees, right, who are the owners of the company. Now, I think, again, we need legal advice to understand whether you would, I don't know that you would need to convert to a public benefit corporation, but there might be a possibility in the discovery process where you would amend your charter to consider the fact that the mission of the organization, yes, is primarily for the benefit of your employees who are the owners of the cooperative, but also for the planet, for customers, for the community. And so this is a technical question that I, I can't fully answer but we are building pathways for this to be viable for cooperatives. And, and we can talk more later. Um, anybody that is interested in this topic, please write down my email, rburgos at prsciencetrust.org. rburgos at prsciencetrust.org. If you're interested in knowing more and participating of our events, even joining the cohort and be evaluated to be part of the cohort, more than happy to, to have you. I think we ran out of time. I know there was another question. We're going to be right there. If you want to come and, and, and meet us, more than happy to. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. Thank Muchísima you so gracias, much, Jorge. Pedro, yeah. Gracias. Los exhorto ahora a las 5 y 10 de la tarde. Jorge va a dar una charla en el main stage muy inspiracional, de mucha inspiración, así que les exhorto a que participen de esa charla también. Esperamos que sí, gracias.